Here I'm going to start work on the uh, texture painting on the 3D model itself. Um, at the beginning here, all I'm going to be doing is just trying to um, paint the model so that I have some sense of where the features of the face are. Um, and then after I do this, I'm going to take the Targa image into Photoshop and try and add a little more detail in there. But what I'm doing here is I've got um, the brush palette up in the UV image editor window. I'm using the brush on the lowest opacity. Um, the flow at, or the, excuse me, the fall off at, at zero. And what I'm doing is I'm just um, opening up the color panel, clicking the sample button and uh, sampling uh, colors off of the image. Um, I mentioned before that the images of Ian Joyner um, he was a character, ar character artist who used to work at Blur Studios, and he had a um, character texturing um, DVD for the Nomen workshop that I have, and he added that image as just a, as a freebie. So I'm going to use it. But anyway, he's very good. If you want to see how to really <laughs> texture a, a character, I highly recommend his DVD from the Nomen Workshop. So a plug there for someone else's uh, character texturing videos. Um, so what I'm doing, continuing to do here is working on just adding a little bit of reddish tint to the ears, the mouth, around the eyes, and that gives me a, s a sense when I take it into Photoshop, kind of a base layer as to where the uh, features of, of the face are. So from here, what I think I do, maybe work on a little bit, oh, I think I work on some color on, on the cheeks. Um, th what would really be great in Blender is if we had l layers, like in uh, Photoshop or, or GIMP when we're uh, painting a model, but uh, at least at this point in time, that may be a little too much to ask. But um, I would recommend when you're doing this kind of thing to keep the opacity very low and the f uh, f uh, fall off very low too. So notice I saved the target image in the UV image editor. Um, when you're texture painting and when you've got an image like that in the UV editor, you need to save the image in the UV image editor because saving the blend file, just going to file, save, isn't going to save the, the image. You got to save two times, one for the image, one for the blend file. I've done that so many times. Save the blend file and then exit and I lose the changes I've m made on the image. So just a word of warning. Don't be like me. <laughs> so here I've brought it into uh, Photoshop. I'm bringing, opening up all the reference images and I'm just, um, you know, selecting uh, colors, uh, sampling colors off of the images. And I'm going to make a little, a few little blemishes and s uh, spots and things like that. This character is supposed to be a teenager type. So got to have a few pimples there. 
And once again, I'm keeping the opacity very low. I guess in Photoshop, you've got um, opacity and flow. So now I'm going to um, bring the target image back in, hitting the reload button, and see how it looks on the model. So there you can see a few of the little blemishes and stuff. It's very subtle. I'm not going for high realism here in this particular animation. Just enough to make it believable. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rough in the eyebrows on the 3D model. Just with a light brownish color. And then I'm going to take that target and copy it and paste it in as a layer on my Photoshop file. So I have a, um, a way to tell where the, where the eyebrows should go. So now I'm going to do some quality, high definition Photoshop painting. Yeah. <laughs> so this is me painting eyebrows. And it usually works out pretty well once you also um, layer in the bump map and the uh, specular. But for this video I'm just dealing with painting in the uh, color map. So once again I'm just uh, sampling colors off of the reference image, trying to vary the uh, brush width, vary the opacity, vary the color, um, you know, and just keep working at it until I get something that is decent. As I said, I'm not going for high realism here. And I just copied the eyebrow and pasted it in a new layer, flipped it. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to save it out to a target file and then take it back into Blender to see how I did, to see if they're positioned okay, if, they're, if they look alright. Um, oftentimes you need to do a little, a little tweaking, kind of like this. I guess I, I thought they were a little too high there. Bring them down just a bit. And maybe tilt them in a little. There we go. And then I think I'm going to erase a bit between the eyes and on the edges too, so they aren't quite so pronounced. And then also I'm going to reduce the opacity of the l layer that each one of them are on just to fade them back just a little. And there you go. Basic color map. Hope that helped.